But apparently Bloomberg and Kelly care so much about black and brown men that they're willing to treat all of them as criminals in order to scare the minority who are criminals and thus save black and brown lives. How did I not understand that? It's for our own good. We should be thanking them for this. If a program like Stop and Frisk is abandoned, will people die? Well, I, I think, no question about it, violent crime will go up. All right. Uh, welcome back, folks. Heather McDonald. Thomas W. Smith, fellow at the Manhattan Institute and contributing editor of City Journal, is here with us. Um, welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, stop and frisk uh, has, uh, has been stopped in New York City, and crime has gone up. But I, I want to focus on St. Louis. You wrote a great piece uh, about uh, at National Review uh, Online and also one at City Journal um, talking about um, the police and unasked questions and unanswered questions and the whole thing. But... When they protested the other day in St. Louis over the shooting of an armed black man who shot at a cop three times, and they protested that, and said, no, he didn't have a gun, he had a piece of, he had a sandwich. I mean, I, I, where are we? They're not only protesting that, they're saying it's racial profiling. <laughs> that that you, you actually are suspicious towards somebody who's running from the cop, turns around and starts shooting at you. We're at a position now, actually, you can laugh, but it's actually very scary, oh, yeah. Steve because A, it's open season on cops. The very fact that this guy turned around and started shooting, I think is, is partly due at least to the whole hostility that's being generated in St. Louis. But it also means that you have completely delegitimated the police. And society needs cops to protect us, to maintain public order. And if, if they are now viewed as, as engaged in racially bias profiling when they are simply going after legitimate criminal action, it's all over. It is. You know, I had Jesse Jackson on uh, after uh, Ferguson, and I, and I said, are there any circumstances under which you would say that it was legitimate for the officer to have fired and, and shot at Michael Brown? He said, no. Well, that mindset is extended into this and, and, and has been, uh, you know, have borne fruit with this, uh, you know, saying that even if a cop is being shot at, he can't, he can't shoot. And you're right. Uh, but, but, you know, proactive policing, as is the title of your piece in, uh, in National Review, uh, is not racial profiling. And the cops are doing their job and protecting the minority communities right. for the most part. And you go to a community meeting in minority areas, and the first thing you hear is, A, we want more cops. B, we want the drug dealers off the streets. And when you arrest them, they come back the next day. Why can't you hold them there? You know, there are law-abiding people in minority communities who understand the vitality of public order and who support the cops, but they're never heard. And, of course, uh, you, you're also saying that the people are not being represented by the spokespeople or the, or the people that they import on the buses who are anarchists and pro-Palestinian yeah. and whatever they are who yeah. protest in Ferguson or in St. Louis over this shooting when the real people are saying, get, get rid of these criminals. Yeah, no, protest is an industry now. Yeah. You know, you have all the union people. It's just, it's, an, it's a lifestyle. It is. Uh, and, and people that have the time to do this, I don't know where they get the funding for it. But, but it's obviously very well funded. In, in your piece at, uh, at City Journal, um, Ferguson's unasked questions, um, talk about some of the ones you wrote about. Well, the biggest thing we've heard about is that police forces that are majority white are by definition racist mm -hmm. and, and prone to abuse. And so everybody led by the New York Times, but many media outlets have been going around and counting police force racial ratios and comparing them to their cities. What's never talked about are those police forces that are majority black and how they stand up. Mm -hmm. And here in New York City, we've been going through, the federal government is investigating the corrections officers on Rikers Island, which is the second largest jail complex in the city. and. And the government is alleging a pattern of abuse against adolescent inmates, tying them up to gurneys and beating them to within an inch of their lives. Now, maybe these are false allegations, mm -hmm. but these, it's the left making the allegations. Well, the Rikers Force is 66% black. Detroit just came out of federal consent decree monitoring 11 years for police brutality. Another majority black force. Two-thirds black yeah. force. Yeah. New Orleans as well. Yeah. Other things, uh, it's racist to issue traffic citations. Uh, the, 
you know, the, the allegation in the New York Times was that this was, they were paying, requiring too many fines out of black drivers. What are the majority of reasons that, that police people are fined in Ferguson for driving? Number one, driving without insurance. Yeah. You don't want to be hit by a, somebody who's it's uninsured. Not, right, right. It's, it's fascinating. And uh, check it out, uh, of course, uh, City Journal. And uh, also check out Proactive Policing is Not Racial Profiling at uh, nationalreview.com. Uh, the great Heather McDonald. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Always good to see you. All right, folks. So we'll be back next with North Carolina Congresswoman Renee Elmers coming up on the Steve Malzberg Show right here on Newsmax Television. Okay.